What's up, guys? I hope y'all are having a great day today, full of positivity and happiness, dude, because the spider simps are once again gonna be very excited that I'm making a video on everyone's favorite game of 2023, and that, of course, is none other than Spider Mid 2. Now I tried, guys, okay? You know, in my last video I said, I'm hoping I can move away from talking about this absolute dumpster fire of a video game, and well, as usual, man, just when you think it's over, these developers always find a way to one-up themselves at every opportunity. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. This is where the fun begins. That's right, guys. Spider-Man 2's lead writers confirmed that Miles Morales is now the main Spider-Man in the Insomniac universe. So I just want to say to everybody who tried to say that Peter was not getting sidelined in this story, that said that he wasn't nerfed or made to look weak and worthless in comparison to Miles, you know, the people who claimed that Peter wasn't absolutely getting cucked overall in the story. But, you know, it feels good, man, because we can clearly clearly see that the entire intent of Insomniac Games this entire time was to replace Peter with Miles, which anyone with a functioning set of ears, eyes, and two fucking brain cells to rub together could have come to that conclusion after playing Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and looking at that horrible fucking plot, dude. I mean, it was so blatantly obvious in the story of this game that they were wanting to replace Peter with Miles. They even have this line in the game, which for all you knuckle-dragging Neanderthals who need a fucking drip tray under your fucking drooling mouth, who will still dispute that fact, listen to this shit and tell me I'm wrong. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me when it has you? <laughs> I don't know. But to make it even worse, man, let's not even forget the fact that Peter retires at the ripe age of 25 in order to stop being Spider-Man to go and fight the real villain out there, and that, of course, being climate change. Have you talked to Miles about? Not yet. You ready? Uh, Miles. I've been meaning to talk to you uh, about something. Uh, I mean, I have been talking to you all, all the time. It's, it's, it's great uh, to talk. So many good talks. I just haven't been talking to you about what I should have been talking to you about. Pete. Uh, wait, uh, let me start again. I got this. All of it. Go be Peter Parker for a while. Are you, are you sure? It's, it's a big city. I can handle it. As long as I can still call you for advice. You don't need it. Maybe not now, but there'll come a time. I'm here for you, always. Hey, bro. See you. But yeah, anyone with two functioning brain cells to rub together could have seen this coming and knew what the fuck was happening in this entire storyline that Peter was being replaced by Miles. At every single opportunity, in every single major boss fight, Peter is saved by Miles and Miles is never actually saved by Peter. Think about it. During the fucking lizard fight, Miles saves Peter. During the fucking Craven fight, when Peter is about to kill Craven and 
all of a sudden, Miles has a talk no jutsu moment to the point where Peter can rip the suit off only with the help of Miles. In order to get Peter his anti-venom powers, Miles has to go inside of his mind and help him find inner peace to unlock the powers, and only because Miles reformed Lee was Peter ever able to get that power in the first place. Then on top of that, when it comes down to the final showdown with Venom, guess who it is that finishes off Venom in the final two rounds of the boss fight? That's right, it's Miles, and it's just so blatantly obvious, bro. Like, even with the most overpowered ability against Venom in the Spider-Man lore, Peter still needs Miles to save the day because Peter got his fucking ass beat by Venom, whereas Miles is able to come in and finish the job, essentially. I mean, shit, even Peter or Miles doesn't land the actual final blow against Venom in the cutscenes. Of course, that honor goes to none other than everyone's favorite heroine in the game, MJ, or is someone in my comments section called her Mewing John, which... That is definitely a unique insult, bro, and I really like that, but it's just written all over the place, man. You would have to be blind, you would have to be willfully ignorant to the fucking facts of this storyline that Miles was always intended to be the replacement for Peter. That's right, guys. Two games in to the fucking Spider-Man franchise, if you don't include the fucking Miles dedicated spinoff, Spider-Man is already hanging up his fucking cape, or I guess mask, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and is retiring at the ripe age of 25, bro. He had an extremely long career as Spider-Man, you know, 25 years old, like, holy shit, bro. Someone ready the room at the retirement home. It's just wild, man. Two games into the Spider-Man franchise, Spider-Man is already being phased out in a sense and will no longer be the main focus of the game. And, you know, Insomniac did the writing in such a terrible way that they had Spider-Man refer to Miles as Spider-Man the entire entire game to like condition people into accepting it because how fucking stupid is that shit like what superhero out there which maybe in my limited knowledge because i'm not a fucking comic geek or any shit like that but in what fucking world of comic books and superheroes does a superhero call their sidekick or partner by the exact same fucking name and if miles morales was actually spider-man why did they need to call the spider-man spinoff game spider-man miles morales that name why didn't they just call it Spider-Man 2 and then call this game Spider-Man 3? Because Miles is not Spider-Man. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And they knew people would be fucking pissed off and not buy the fucking game if that's what happened. Because people would be angry that they're phasing out Spider-Man. Now, there are a group of people, especially on my community tab about this entire thing, which are absolutely in denial and it's great. And I've seen a group of people defending this immediately jumping to the conclusion that this is just the anti-woke crowd being outraged that they're replacing Peter Parker with a black character and you know I think it's funny because in my community tab I never even mentioned that aspect of it which there definitely is a very heavy underlying political motivation for this happening which if you're familiar with the company Sweet Baby Inc you would understand exactly why this story unfolds the way it does as with so many other Sony games and video games in the industry at large. You know, maybe I'll make a video on that. That would be a very interesting topic because a lot of things in the gaming industry start to really make sense once you start to understand the role of companies like Sweet Baby in the overall gaming industry and their influence on narratives and storytelling within the AAA gaming industry. So that might be an interesting topic for another day, but I think it's funny that people immediately jump to that conclusion when I literally didn't even allude to it in the community community post. All I was saying is that anyone who thought that Peter was not getting sidelined by the cheap copycat version of him, aka Miles Morales, which is literally just fucking Spider-Man with lightning to make him cooler, that is the definition of a fucking cheap copycat, deal with it motherfuckers. But anyway, it's interesting that their minds immediately jump to the political motivation because, you know, subconsciously they know that's what it's about, even if they're in favor of it and they're defending it, that's immediately immediately where their mind goes, even though that specific issue was never even brought up by myself. So I think that says a lot more about them than it does about me and how over-politicized they are when it comes to analyzing decisions.
decisions made in video games and video game storytelling. Now, I had a lot of other people saying, you took the quote out of context, dude. You took it out of context. If you read the actual interview, you would understand exactly what they mean by that, which I don't really know how you can take this out of context considering the context I showed you earlier, but let me play it again real quick for the dumbasses in the back. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me when it has you? <laughs> I don't know. But if that's not enough for you, let's go ahead and read this interview because, you know, I'm sure I will still be accused of taking it out of context. So, you know what? For the dipshits in the back, let's go ahead and go through this interview. So, the interviewer asked, you said earlier you basically knew right away that you wanted playable Venom. Does that also apply to ending this game with Miles as the, quote, main Spider-Man from now on? And Emily Morris, the advanced writer of Spider-Man 2, says, it always felt very nice natural and I think we all collectively thought it would happen. To me, it shows a great deal of evolution from Miles. At the beginning of the game, we see him struggling to figure out what he wants to do with his life. By the end, we had Miles carrying the burden of saving the city and also carrying Pete when Pete wasn't strong enough to carry himself at various points. So there you guys go, man. The main focus is the progression of Miles as a character in the story, which is blatantly obvious if you paid attention. So Emily continues saying, that's what's been so cool about writing a story about two Spider-Men. They're both strong, and one of them can be strong when the other is not. By the end, Miles is more confident, and he's like, yeah, I got this. How much worse can things get after what we just went through? But at what point is Miles not strong in this campaign? Like, literally, the one moment you can point to when he gets captured by Kraven, he's still strong enough to not only defeat Lee and pretty much anyone else that Kraven throws at him, he also reforms Lee turning him into the good guy and basically indirectly makes Peter anti-Venom in the process and is never really at any risk of being injured or killed himself because he's simply just bait to lure Peter in to fight Kraven so that Kraven can be challenged by the symbiote suit. And what's interesting is even though Kraven does beat Miles off screen, Miles eventually beats Peter after Peter gets done beating Kraven. So literally at no point in this storyline is Miles ever portrayed as being weak or needing Peter to prop him up. It is the exact opposite throughout this entire story, and Peter gets walked all over like a fucking doormat at every opportunity. But let's keep going, guys. So Ben Arfman, the narrative director of Spider-Man 2, chimed in also saying, to echo what Brittany said, the idea of a two Spider-Man story was always really essential to this game. I think pretty early on, we knew that we wanted to have that moment of handing the reins over, and as we developed it, as we started to lay down more track leading up to that moment, it just felt more and more right. I think it was John who wrote that scene in Aunt May's garage, and it's one of my favorite scenes. The way that Miles intuits exactly what Pete is thinking and stops him from stumbling through, trying to hand over the mask, Miles going, you know, I got this bro. It's such a great moment between the two of them, and it felt like such a natural conclusion. I'm not sure when specifically we decided to do that, but it always felt like the only way the game could end. So there you guys go. Literally in this quote, he says that at a certain point in the development of the story, they decided this is how they wanted the game to end, and they essentially laid the track leading up to that moment. Meaning, they came to this conclusion that they wanted Peter to be replaced by Miles, and they needed to construct a story that would be able to get fans to accept that, and come to the conclusion themselves that, yeah, this is the right thing to do, bro. Peter needs to retire at the age of 25 and go save the fucking climate, especially after getting his own set of symbiote powers, and, you know, he needs to stop being Spider-Man, stop saving lives, and focus on the real enemy out there, climate change, and save the planet instead. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me when it has you? But yeah, this quote literally confirms that replacing Peter was always going to be the focus of this story, and that essentially the entire plotline of this game is Miles' coming-of-age story, essentially, to become Peter's replacement as the main Spider-Man. But this interview continues on this particular topic. So the interviewer asked another question, saying, Before getting Miles to that point, he gets sidelined as Peter becomes more enmeshed with Harry and later the symbiote. What a shame. 
shame, man. You know, Miles gets sidelined in a Spider-Man game for Peter Parker instead. Oh, the fucking horror. That's clearly by design. But did you ever worry about shortchanging Miles too much? To which Emily Morris replies saying, I joined the Spider-Man 2 team maybe about a month into production and remember being asked how I felt about both Spider-Man. They asked, through the view of a player who didn't know what happened next, if I felt like the distribution between the two leads was okay. There was always a constant checking in and going back to our North Star to make sure that we're headed towards the kind of story that we wanted to tell with these two heroes. So I've seen a lot of people in my comment section saying that Spider-Man is still the main focus of this campaign, which I would vehemently disagree with. He might have the most screen time, but Miles is the true hero of this story if you actually look into it. But this confirms what we already knew. Peter at no point was ever supposed to be the main focus of Spider-Man 2. At the very least, it was supposed to be equally distributed between the two of them. So this entire narrative that people are pushing, that the plotline of this game revolves primarily around Peter, is nipped in the bud immediately when the writers were literally doing consistent checks to make sure that the story was balanced in favor of both Spider-Man characters and not too heavily tilted towards Peter. God forbid that Peter Parker be the main focus of a Spider-Man game. But Ben Arfman continues saying, we always knew that this wasn't a mentor-mentee story. This was about two Spider-Men who are incredibly good at what they do. You see in the opening with Sandman that they've got this solid partnership, which then gets challenged by not just Harry and the symbiote, but also Mr. Negative. All these things are coming in to challenge that core partnership. Throughout development, we pushed and pulled things Things in different directions because we pride ourselves on being a team where great ideas can come from anywhere. But we always had this confidence that we were going to do service to both Spider-Men and tell an exceptional story starring both of them. And I would say there's only one response to that. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. So with that extra context that a lot of people claimed that I needed that I was leaving out by not, you know, including the whole interview quote, I think it only adds to the point I was trying to make. Peter was always meant to be replaced. That is the first thing that was planned with this story was how are we going to pass the baton over to Miles Morales and do so in a convincing way to where we won't get major pushback from fans. And well, I have to say, man, for a lot of the normies out there who just want to consume product, it's seems to be working, but for people like me who have to autistically analyze stories and notice all this type of shit, you know, I'm not even a Spider-Man fan, really, at the end of the day, and I can even notice this type of shit and can see the obvious direction they're trying to do. They are trying to phase out Peter Parker, because at the end of this game, they literally introduced that Cindy chick who is supposed to be, like, Silk or Spider-Girl or whatever the fuck, so I guarantee you whatever the next Spider-Man game is, because we already saw the teaser at the end as well, where Doc Ock and Norman Osborn are teaming up to go after Peter, my guess is, is the next mainline Spider-Man entry will revolve around Doc Ock and Norman Osborn either capturing or defeating Peter Parker, and this Cindy girl and Miles will have to come in and save the original Spider-Man, truly cementing themselves as not only the saviors of New York, but also Peter Parker's successor once and for all. That is the only logical plot line that this story can go in this direction, especially when you consider the motivations behind the way the story was told in the first place. So I don't really know what else to say, man. It is obvious that Insomniac wants to phase out Peter Parker from the Spider-Man franchise after him only having one standalone game and one game where he co-stars with Miles Morales. Apparently, all it took was two games for our boy Peter Parker to want to hang up the mask once and for all and pursue other things that actually matter like saving the polar bears but I don't know guys let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below and let me know if you maybe want to see that video on sweet baby I think that would be a uh, very interesting topic to bring attention to because I think a lot of eyes would actually be opened if people really did do just an ounce of research into that shit and they would start to detect a trend maybe even if they agree with it they might be able to acknowledge that yeah this 
this type of shit is going on at the very least and whether or not they think it's a good or a bad thing that's up for them to decide but this whole like attitude of just complete denialism and acting like it doesn't fucking exist is just simply pathetic and I do think it is funny that the motherfuckers who claim that you know that I'm just some screeching alt-right anti-woke dipshit that you know can't stand the idea of them adding a black character into a video game dude you fucking cuck I know that's one of your favorite words you right-wing asshole say come on cuck ask real fucking questions cuck and don't be a fucking pussy because you're a bigoted asshole too so there, Fuck I think you. But anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. Make sure to drop a like on it if you did enjoy it. And like I always say in these Spider-Man videos, bro, I hope that this will be the last time I have to talk about Spider-Mid 2, but at the current rate, things are evolving. You know, you never know what's gonna fucking walk through that door. But anyway, guys, appreciate y'all taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best, and I will catch you guys next time.